Today we'll learn more about the Wapaka Reads Mockingbird program at the Wapaka Area Public Library, find out about some upcoming events at the Wapaka Community Arts Center, have a recap of Arts on the Square, see the Wapaka Kids Triathlon, and feature the Pet of the Month. I'm Joni Kern, and this is What's Happening Wapaka. afternoon is Peg Burrington. We've seen you before. It's always good to have you back on Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to talk today about a program that the library is doing this fall, and it is the Read Mockingbird exactly. program. Exactly. And it's the book To Kill a Mockingbird, which right. many of us have read at one time or another, most of us, because we had to. So what I, what I want you to talk about is, because this is about a month and a half long thing and you have um, a book club that you're kind of starting up so why don't you give us the full picture well we're reading um, Mockingbird uh, we're encouraging everyone in Wapaka to read or reread the book and then we've created opportunities to get together and discuss the book and our first opportunity is actually a new book club that's being started by the library called Book to Art. And the idea is that while you're thinking about this book and reading it, you're thinking about your own creative pieces and what that brings out in you. You get together to talk about the book and then use art as a creative expression. Okay, but I don't have to be good at art in no. order to belong, right? It's really not all about the product, but it's all about that process and being able to get together and talk while you're creating something. So it's really about process. And to create something that comes to you from what you read in the book, I think helps the, uh, the philosophy of the book because the book has so many issues that not only were issues back in 1962, but there's still issues today. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to have that tie in. Well, and, and um, you know, what we've seen happen recently in Missouri, uh, racism and bigotry is still alive and well in our country, and we need to be reminded not only how far we've come with desegregation, but how far we have yet to go. And so those themes within that book and the idea that you have to think about how other people uh, feel and live before you can really understand what they're going through is still so relevant to everybody in our current society. Oh, I agree. I mean, it was relevant 300 years ago. I don't think that the relevance changes, and that's a great, it's one of the, you were telling me that To Kill a Mockingbird is still a bestseller. It is. And to be 54 years old and to still be that high a seller, I think, shows us how the themes in the book resonate. They do, they do, and I read it um, when I had to read it for school, and of course, you know, then you're a guided read and you have to read, a, you know, write a summary after every chapter. It really didn't uh, make the same impression on me as a child as it did today because I have so much more knowledge of how the world works. Um, so I think people are really reconnecting with this book, and I've heard people say, well, it's kind of a sad book, and it is, but it isn't. It, it shows us we've made progress, but it also shows us that we have a long way to go. So the first um, book discussion is a book to art discussion, and they're actually going to be making small books um, that it can be worn as jewelry, but you can bring any art project you want with you if you think more organically than that. And, and that's then, September 6th, it's a Saturday. Yep, and then you do <coughs> September 19th, and then again on September 25th. And I can pick up this flyer, I know I can mm -hmm. pick it up at the library, is right. it anywhere else? Um, you can go to our website, www.wapakalibrary.org, and get all of that information there, too. Okay, great. And let's talk um, about a couple of other things you've got going on. You've got the um, Lunch and Learn, which you have going on, and that's um, once a month, September, right. October, November, and December. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, it was a program that was started almost 10 years ago when we started looking at how we can serve our seniors in our community. And one of the things, they don't like to go out at night, they don't like to drive in the dark. And so we said, what about 
something that is in the day during the day and everybody needs to eat lunch so we serve a light lunch we take a goodwill offering and that goes towards the lunch the friends of the library sponsor it and then um, they, they get to hear a great speaker so our first one is September 9th and um, Michael Patrick who is a physician who's now a photographer is going to come and and show us a photo tour of Chilean Patagonia. So it's, it's, it's really marvelous to be able to see that on a big screen and see the beautiful colors and the um, nature photography that he's taken there. And if we've missed September 9th, because this show airs the entire month of September, October 14th is coming up and you right. can find that so on the website as well. So it's always the second Tuesday of the month at noon. And you can make reservations just so we know how many people are going to be serving lunch. But otherwise, it's all free and everyone's welcome. It'll be about an hour of your day. And I think it's worth it at the library. There's, you guys have a lot of terrific programs, so it's always nice to hear about those. Thanks so much for being here, Peg. We'll look Thank forward you. to seeing you again. Thank you. Next up, we are going to talk to Barbara Faye Weezy from the Wapaka Community Arts Center. Get your old computers, electronics, and appliances ready for the Wapaka Electronics Recycling Day, Friday, October 10th from 11 a.m. till 1.30 p.m. at the Wapaka Kmart parking lot. Details at cityofwapaka.org. We have Barbara Faye Weezy and Diane, Diane Vieser, Vieser mm -hmm. here from the Wapaka Community Arts Center talking about something that's going on on October 4th. We're going to flash the flyer called Soup in the art bowls. And I thought this was really interesting. We were talking a little bit um, before the segment, and we have some bowls that we're gonna show, um, but this is essentially people. We have our artists come in and paint the bowls. We will have about 150 bowls that we be, will be painted, and they will all be one of a kind. Nothing gets repeated. So um, we have about 150 bowls, then we, our event, October 4th, is during the um, Hidden Studios weekend. We figure people have to eat. So they can come to the... His or we like to eat. Yes. yes. They can come to the um, historic depot, Wapaka Depot, and that's where we're serving the meal. Wonderful. So we have all these bowls. They're all signed, by the way. But there's all kinds of different ones. We want to show you just a few of them. This one is just... This one is simple. I really like the colors of this one and then the inside yes. so some people paint spend more time on the inside some people spend more time on the outside we have things that are just plain uh, bright colors we have things that are fun bowls that are fun this one you can see has a plainer outside but it has this wonderful inside and we want to show oh. Diane has two of right them we in have hands. two that have a very oriental feel to them this one is very striking on the inside as well on the outside but this one is also, if I get my hand in the right place here, there we go. This one too, it shows you how different they can look. This is very striking on the outside. Also has a small branch on the inside. Branch on the inside. But it just shows you the difference in the artist. And this is one of our ones, we've been doing this now. This is our third, fourth year, fourth year. wow. Time flies. Our fourth year doing these, and this is one of the bowls from last year, just to show you. We have come now to use the same bowl because that way they stack so nice in your cabinet that we figure you'll just keep coming. And this is one that is done by one of our artists, Audrey Bunchkowski. I was just, I was just sitting here thinking because I'm one of these, um, I'm one of these people that like everything to kind of match. So, are there like sets? I mean, do you ever see we, like sets Right, of we bowls? do. We do quite often. Will one artist will do like a set of four, and they may not be exactly the same, but they coordinate and they'll go together. Different Maybe colors, similar pattern, things. different colors, or something like this. You might have different kinds of butterflies and different colors, but the same kind of like stars and sponging. So, oh, is that, or is if that it is a striped one. If it's some of these have stripes on them, if it's a stripey one, it may be slightly different colors in the stripes. Or we had a wonderful set that was strawberries and... We had strawberries, we had carrots. lemons, we had carrots, we had one, you they know, like four that were different veggies and four that were different fruits. And... Um, I have four horses. I need a bowl for each of them. Well, wonderful. You can have and, that. And we have one of our artists, Mary Miller, 
who does wonderful horses, and she did do a bowl last year with horses. Also, Alice Lees comes in every year and does one horses. of her horse bowls, and they've been different colors each year. And Alice is so yes. incredibly talented yes. anyway. But these are all local artists, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. So they're all signed on the bottom, so you have a piece of artwork. Now, these are truly regular bowls that I can put in my cupboard and use. They right, and they can, they are also, you can put them in the microwave and you can put them in the dishwasher. That's the best things about it, is yes. the microwave and the dishwasher. Yes. So, so, the thing is, we're going to start having these on sale now at the Art Center at 200 North Main Street. So, these will be, will be available for sale. And if you see a bowl that you really like, you almost have to buy it then. Better come get it. Because it might go. Right. However, just bring it with you on October 4th. We'll be serving soup from 11 to 4. Yep, 11 a.m. Yes. to 4 p.m. So it's right. $20 for it's the It's $20 bowl. for your one-of-a-kind artist painted bowl. And the soup and is free. And the soup is free. And then, you, and then have you also get bread, crackers, and dessert. Oh, so it's a it's a full meal. Oh, there. it's a deal. And you were telling me the soups are. Um, I can remember. I know we're having a squash soup, Philly steak, and chicken, and chicken noodle, 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 and a fourth one. And a fourth one that neither one of us can remember right now. It's a yep. surprise soup. It's a surprise soup. Right. It's a surprise delicious soup. Right, and sure. also I wanted to mention if anyone has a special order that they would like a bowl done, they can come in. The only thing that we do, it will be a little bit extra, and we ask that they pay for it ahead of time because we don't want to wind up with one with somebody's name that nobody comes to you pick know, up. And, and I was going to ask you that, and mm -hmm. I thought that that was really selfish of me, but no. I think that that would be for those of us that want artwork right. Right. like that. I think that that's a, a fabulous idea, mm -hmm. so we'll have to keep this in mind. You know, talk about your horses. Someone came in who had doggies. Scotty dogs. Right, little Scotty dogs. Specific bowls with Scotty dogs on them, and we were able to fill her request. Yes, but isn't, it was a special order. Isn't mm -hmm. that absolutely fabulous? So we'll keep this in mind. It is October fourth. October fourth. So these, you want to go in and you want to shop for your bowls in advance. Right. And then these bring your these bowls. So bowls you can get your these lunch. bowls will be out so. in the next couple of days for sale. And, but you have to come in every couple of days. There'll be new bowls. And you have to you have to go in there. You anyway, just have to. Yes, great, you do. It's a great place to go yes. shopping. So mm -hmm. thank you, Barbara Faye. You're welcome. Thank you, Diane, for You're coming welcome. on. We will see you again. Thank I you hope. for having me. Next, we are going to see a piece on the Wapaka Arts on the Square, which happened just a couple of weeks ago. Please enjoy. A Wapaka City Park is close to where you live. Enjoy the skateboard park, baseball and other sporting activities, playgrounds galore, the South Park Beach, rent a shelter for your cookout or family gathering, enjoy fishing, Picturesque views. Relax with nature. Hike the River Ridge Trail. And check out the community garden. Wapaka Parks, where nature, sports, friends, and family come to meet. Learn more about Wapaka Parks at wapakaparkandrec.com. If you'd like to be a guest on What's Happening Wapaka, contact Josh at 715-258-4405 or email jwerner at cityofwapaka.org. Full details at wintvwapaka.com. Here at Arts on the Square, and I have Marcy that we're going to talk to for a few minutes. Now, Marcy founded the Wapaka Community Arts Board. How long ago did you do that? Uh, I think it might be 15 or 16 years, um, but we, you know, we kind of became more official with time. And um, our first Arts on the Square was eight years ago, so that's kind of I don't know. I'm babbling. I had um, I had the opportunity today to wander around. There's some absolutely gorgeous pieces of art and jewelry here. 
So this grows for you every year, I'll bet. It does. Um, it's a two-day event right now. I mean, our dream is to stretch it out every year. And we've been able to get a lot of really good involvement from the retailers in the city. So that's how it's building. It's about community building and about just celebrating. So everything here is free except for the food and the beer. Um, obviously, you have to pay for art if you're buying it, but the workshops are free, the music is free. Um, it's just a fabulous way to just celebrate Wapaka. So we can look forward to it. I saw in the program that you already have some plans set aside for next year's. Right. It's always the same weekend as the triathlon every August, so you can just count on it happening that same time. And we're enjoying some music here in the background as well, um, but it's a great place to wander around and it turned out to be a beautiful day. So Yeah, we're lucky. Um, there's a lot going on. I guess if um, this is probably going to be broadcast later, so this is for next year. Don't miss it. There's workshops. There's community art projects. There's just everything you can think of. Today there's going to be some surprises throughout the day and a lot of music, three stages, um, 41 artists, a lot of food. Yeah, it's a terrific place to be. I'm, I'm happy that I had the opportunity to come over here and thank you for all of your hard work because I'm sure without you this wouldn't be possible. Well, we have a great group of volunteers and um, I'm getting called up to the stage right now to sing with Tom Pease, but we have a great group and I'm very proud of everybody. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. We at Arts on the Square this morning, we ran into Maddie and some um, Sister City Japanese exchange students. So we're going to take a little time to talk to you. Hi, Maddie. Welcome. Hi. So what is the Sister City Exchange program all about? Um, well, Japanese students come here and then we like take like four or five of them and then we go there for an entire week and then we do things like all through the week. So it's a ton of fun. You get to show the Japanese gals around town and, and this was a terrific time with the uh, Arts on the Square. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We took them to the triathlon this morning and they helped out bring out fruit to the triathlon. So, Well, that's kind of fun. So they did the water and all that? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's great. So how long are they here for? Um, they arrived on Wednesday night and they leave Tuesday morning. Okay, we're going to have them introduce themselves. What's your name? Uh, Masami. And what's your name? I'm Ayano. And yours? I'm Miho. Well, welcome everybody to Wapaka. You're having a great time, I hope? That is terrific. Um, and enjoy Arts on the Square today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We are talking with Tom, who is um, the wooden feather guy. I actually, I actually walked by your booth a little bit earlier and was just super impressed that you could do such beautiful artwork with feathers. And you just told me these are all wood. Yes, they are. They're all wood. Uh, I've been carving for 44 years now. Um, I carve them, paint them. Uh, I used to carve big birds, eagles, hawks. Uh, egrets, things like that, and then I started to get into uh, carving the feathers like this. Um, just something a little bit easier, a um, little bit easier to sell. Um, and there's so many different colors, and there's so many different feathers on a, on a bird that I can carve. So, And I think they're just really, really unique. Did you go to school, learn how to carve, or is this just natural talent? Uh, I learned from a good friend of my father's when I was young. Uh, kind of taught me how to carve decoys and things like that. And then uh, I just kind of progressed into into this. Um, I saw a gentleman that had mounted uh, insects and it sort of gave me the idea of, of doing the feathers like this. Uh, whereas, you know, and most of the time we, you can't have a feather. You can't have an eagle feather in your possession or an owl or, you know, things like that. Well, now you can have them because uh, they're made out of wood. So kind of different. Beautiful work, Tom. Absolutely incredible. And thank you for taking some time with us. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Stay there. Yeah. I wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. Why would I want to just grab one and go 
My name is Calvin Stern. Um, I'm John Ladke. And together we run Radio Mundo. Um, it's a world radio show where we talk, uh, talk to students or anybody who's traveled around the world. Um, we love to hear their stories, um, where they've been, where they've lived, um, and just to get that knowledge out there to inspire people to travel and go out and see the world. And we also mix together uh, some of the rarest and most funky uh, cool world music tunes we can find every week into a show that people can be constantly surprised by the next song and um, really open up people's ideas of what music is and uh, how it can be different throughout the world. So we're, we like bringing that here today and that's what we're doing here at uh, Wapak Arts on the Square. We're doing our show basically live as a promotional event for the upcoming radio station here, uh, the community radio station WAUP 99.1, which we're trying to get off the ground and into the arms and hands of the community. We have really enjoyed spending time at Arts on the Square today, talking with people. There's absolutely gorgeous artwork. And I know this is aired after, after it ends, but as you heard Marcy say, they're already planning for 2015. So put it on your calendar. It is a great way to spend a day and introduce your family and friends to Wapaka. Okay, we have Monica Gardner, of course, with an absolutely adorable little kitty um, from the Wapaka Humane Society. It's always good to have you on. Yes. Hi. Hi. So who do we have here? Um, this is Oliver, formerly known as Olivia. Oh, <laughs> I had a kitten named Annie who we found out should have been Andrew, but Annie mm -hmm. fit him way too well. So. Well, his name's Oliver now, and we're going to take care of that in the next couple of weeks, he'll be seeing the vet, and he will be up for adoption He's probably by the time this starts airing. So. Yeah, how old is he? Um, I don't know, nine weeks. Yeah, I would have guessed somewhere around mm -hmm. eight or something like that. He's yep. just adorable little guy. He's very sweet. And you have a lot of kittens, right? Yeah, now well, at the we shelter. will. Um, like I said, probably by the time this airs, we'll probably have twenty or so that are ready to go. Great. Um, we want to talk for a little bit. You have something going on um, that's called PAWS, mm -hmm. and it stands for? Performing Arts Will Pack a Showdown. And what it is, is a, um, anybody who wants to do some performances, you don't have to be a professional at all, do some performances. You can go sign up at Rhythm and Brews. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing several like six or seven different tryouts mm -hmm. and then the final talent show is going to be on November 15th and it's held in the atrium of the Wapaka High School. I'm giving all of the information by mm -hmm. the way. But anyway, there will be some great um, money prizes in there and you can come and have a good time. Great. So we want to make sure and you have a website and you have a Facebook page. Yes, set up on for Facebook this as well. and our uh, wapakahumane.org website. All the information and don't be intimidated. Come down and sign up. And have some fun with it. It's mm -hmm. not um, It's not professional. We're all family in Wapaka anyway. So, so there's, that's right. this is a great place to get on the stage and be silly or be talented, whichever. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Terrific. Thanks, Monica, for being on today. Thanks, Thank Oliver. You. Yes. And your favorite cat is orange, so yes. that's right up your alley. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next month. We'll be here. We are going to close today's show with a recap of the Wapaka Kids Triathlon.
Finish up as quick as you can. Good job. What a great job. What a great finish. Comes 130. Number 73 is in the house. Number 113 is in the house. Here comes number 58, Gracie's in victory lane. Headed for the finish line. Here's number 78. Number 35. Number 94. Number 62. Number 48. Headed for the finish line. Here at the Kids Triathlon, having a ton of fun. I've got two girls here that came in on the finish line. They happen to be twins. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren? And what's your name? Lexi. So did you girls have fun today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you are, are you better at swimming, at running, or at biking? Um, biking. Yeah, you like to bike better? Lauren, did you train for a long time for this? Were you out biking and running, getting ready? Sometimes. Yeah? And you have a broken arm, Lexi, and I was told, your mom said the first thing you asked your doctor was if you could still be in it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have mom, too. Your name is? Beth. Well, hi, Beth. And we cut you because you're actually going to be in the triathlon tomorrow. You were sharing with me that today you get to watch your girls and tomorrow they get to watch you? Yeah, yeah that's right. So you're going to be in the long, the medium, or the short course? The short. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been training with your girls all summer? Yeah, we have. We've been practicing. Going out and biking and running and all of that kind of stuff for it, yeah? yeah. And lots of times swimming, right? Because that's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. So how old are you girls? Seven. Seven years old. Well, good job. You won just because you crossed the finish line today. That's what Mr. King is saying. So congratulations on doing a great job. Thank you. Okay. We have Lisa here, who is one of the volunteers. How long have you been volunteering here at the triathlon? I think this is my fourth year. So you're just an expert at all of them. No, it, it, there's things come up every year. It's different every year, but it's a blast. This is, this is the first time I've been to the kids, and this is a lot of fun. I mean, the excitement here is absolutely over the top. They're so much fun to watch. That's why I love working Friday night, because we get a we're ringside seat. Oh, yeah, for the finish line, because the finish line is right behind us. Yeah. So what all do you do? You just register the kids? No, nope, this is the adults. And we have people from just about every state in the United States. And so it's great to see where they come from and, and talk to them. And So how many adults are there for tomorrow's triathlon? I, I, I know there are 1,200 people registered, but I'm not sure if that's including the kids or if that's long course and short course or... Because we talked to somebody last month on the show, and they were talking about something like hoping for 1,200. Well, so they, they made filled it. They filled it. Yep. That's absolutely wonderful. So thanks for taking a little bit of time with us, Lisa. It was good to see you, and enjoy your weekend here at the triathlon. Thank you, Joni. You too. So we saw all kinds of fun here tonight with the swimming and the biking and the running, and I think there was about 280 kids here tonight. The excitement was absolutely overwhelming. This is really a great evening. If you missed it, plan on it next year. This was the 14th annual triathlon for the kids. Tomorrow is the adult triathlon. We're standing here in the registration tent. It is going to be a terrific weekend.